Hi, my name is Walt Ribeiro, and I'm one of Linode's developer advocates. This video is going to cover three main topics. One, what is Kubernetes? Two, why use it? And three, what is Linode's Kubernetes engine? So check out the time cards and let's get started. All right, so what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes, which is sometimes referred to as K8s for the eight letters between the K and the S, allows you to deploy, scale, and manage your containerized application workloads. So before we jump ahead, what do they mean by containers? Okay, let's imagine that your family has an apple pie recipe, and you want to make sure that this apple pie recipe tastes the same whether it's made in the year 1800, 2000, or the year 2200. How would you do that? Well, you have all these ingredients, right? Like sliced apples, sugar, butter, etc. But you also have hardware, like the exact pot, the pans, and the oven that are to be used. And you also have other things, like the altitude and the water supply from that exact region. If any one of these things are slightly changed, then the recipe will not be an exact replica. So in 50 years, it won't taste the same. Now, imagine that you can take all of these variables and put them inside of a box. In software, that box with everything in it is called a container. To assure that my software will run in 50 years without any bugs or crashes, then I put it inside of a container so that I can recreate the exact environment and run it forever. The most popular container service is called Docker, which brings me back to Kubernetes. Let's reread its definition again. Kubernetes allows you to deploy, scale, and manage your containerized application workloads. So Kubernetes is just a way to run multiple containers, usually just Docker containers, and that's it. So now people in Sydney are going to experience that same exact software application, or Apple Pie, as the people in the United States, forever. All right, so why even use Kubernetes? Well, to understand Kubernetes, we need to expand our Apple Pie analogy. Imagine that the family's Apple Pie business needs a production line so that it can grow into the modern age. So rather than one cook that does everything and makes only one apple pie at a time, let's have a bunch of employees who all specialize in one ingredient. So one person adds the sliced apples, one person adds the sugar, and another person adds the butter. In software, this is called a microservice architecture, whereas when there's only one worker, it could be called a monolithic architecture. In the old days, we built every section of a website onto one giant service. So everything was monolithic. So the website's login page was living on the same service as the website's purchase page. But now we break those up into microservices. The benefits of this are enormous. Apps can run by themselves in containers without needing to use the resources of an entire virtual machine. Or if one part of your website goes down, then the other parts aren't affected. So now the computer system can heal that broken section while the other parts of the website are still operating. It's similar to how if one employee at the Apple factory doesn't go to work one day, then the factory can keep making apple pies. But how is Kubernetes self-healing? Well, in software, our recipe is called a YAML file, Y-A-M-L. And if one of the containers in the real world isn't a perfect match to that YAML file, then the system sends out workers to fix the issue in real time. So the combination of containers and microservices allow us to scale up traffic around the world and franchise our apple pies from Philadelphia into Seoul and into London. Here's a real world example. Back in 2016, when Pokemon Go was launched, it grew to 20 plus million daily active users. Niantic, the company behind Pokemon Go, wasn't prepared for that amount of growth. So they had to quickly come up with a solution for all that traffic. The answer? Containers. Niantic was able to orchestrate their container clusters at this new scale. As a result, with every part of the app being a separate service, that meant that they could push out improvements and changes to their Pokemon Go players. Inside of Niantic, the company, now the separate development teams could fix and create new features while not affecting the other development teams. So while all these microservices are basically each living on separate islands so that they're not in each other's way, they can still talk to each other through what's called APIs, which is how they pass information back and forth. The result is that with Kubernetes, your end users will continue to have a great experience no matter what problems may occur behind the scenes. Okay, so why is it better to use the Linode Kubernetes engine? Well, 
Expanding around the world isn't as simple as just throwing containers everywhere. The Linode Kubernetes engine, which is sometimes referred to as LKE for short, is built for the unforeseen things that occur in real world environments. Kubernetes has what's called a load balancer, which essentially just expands or shrinks based on net traffic in a certain region. So for major video streaming services, they use load balancers by shutting down containers while demand is low in those areas. And it saves them a lot of money. As with all Linode products, we keep our pricing simple and predictable. And unlike other cloud providers, Linode offers a Kubernetes engine with no management fees. This allows us to give you the best price to performance ratio possible, which saves you time, money, and gets to market faster. So let's recap what we've learned. One, Kubernetes allows you to manage containers. And remember, with Linode, there's no costly management fees associated with it. Two, microservices allow your operations to be independent from one another. Therefore, those YAML files can repair or check up on specific sections without disrupting other sections. And three, Linode's Kubernetes engine not only simplifies the complexity of Kubernetes, but we also have simplified pricing. I hope that this video answers some of your questions and perhaps you even learned a few new things along the way. So give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification to get notified of new episodes. Thanks.